Hey guys, Jeff here, Aromatics. I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. Now, elephant in the room, I know no one has said it yet, but you know everyone's thinking it, or at least some people are thinking about it. Jeff, you always do positive reviews. We never see anything negative. So I thought, you know what? It's time to do a video. Maybe get some, uh, some thumbs down and step on a few toes. But of course, this is all just subjective and just my opinion, because I know the tobaccos that I'm going to mention are actually some favorites of a lot of people and people that, that are subscribers to me that I love and respect. So um, no disrespect. This is my personal opinion, and it might even help you um, get a better idea of what I like and what I don't like and how I review. And the fact that I don't necessarily like everything, I just usually... Um, I'm pretty objective. I just usually try to give tastes and, instead of like a rating or anything like that. So anyway, uh, yeah, by the way, I'm, I'm smoking a cigar, doing a cigar review too. So while I'm uh, getting some flavors off this, I thought I would do kill two birds with one stone and do, um, do a different, uh, different type of topic. So anyway, yeah, I am smoking this Yayo Italia. So far, so good. You'll have to watch my review if you're interested in hearing any more about that. So, okay. Let's start. Um, first of all, there's actually rarely any pipe tobaccos that I, I'm disgusted with, that I don't like the taste of. For me, it's usually, the pattern is, it's just usually something that bites me or is a flavor chaser or is just disappointing or there's just something else better. So what I've done is I've named a few tobaccos that um, I don't like and why and also some alternatives um, that I smoke instead to get the same expectation out of the smoke that I thought I was gonna get from those original tobaccos. So, let's start. The Big Three by Peter Stokeby. Now, there are some Peter Stokeby um, tobaccos that I like, and their Englishes seem to be really good and popular as well. But believe it or not, I am not a big fan of their Big Three, and I'll start with number one, Luxury Navy Flake. Now, the problem with this one is when I first started smoking and I asked for different people um, for suggestions on Virginias, and people are talking about Virginias and Virginia Preaks, they, a lot of times they'll name these blends because they're cheap and in bulk and a lot of people do like them but this one it just seemed to be uh, a flavor chaser chaser and it bit um yeah it's a virginia perique in a navy flake style it looks nice it's got a really good presentation just uh, frustrated me just no flavor and it actually kind of turned me off to um other other um virginias and virginia preaks because i thought they were all when i was new i thought they were all similar and that was like one of the higher standards from what i was reading so anyway, on to the next one. Oh, um, and a good, say, um, one that I found that's a good alternative to that, and cheap as well, if, if Luxury Navy Flake isn't doing it for you, is Drexel 8. It's a Virginia Flake, um, Virginia Perique Flake as well, and it's probably the same price range, easy to get, and I think it's got more flavor and it's better. Number two, here's another favorite and a real pretty flake that I really wanted to like, but just never did was luxury bullseye flake another great looking little coin um with that cavendish in the, in the middle but once again just no flavor it got bite out of it and it was just so bland for me um yep sorry i know uh at at below i know you like it and a lot plenty of other people like it but not once again turned me off on on other coins in virginia preaks namely a scudo i uh, you know, I never bought a Scudo because I thought it was compared to this, but luckily um, Briar Blues uh, sent me some Scudo and love it. Totally different, which that would be my recommendation, although it's more pricey, but is it really that much pricier? Like, in my opinion, you know, paying $15 for bulk or paying, you know, you know, maybe double that, you know, $30 for some stuff that you really like, that's up to you. But there's plenty of, the Virginia Preaks are just so widely out there. I'm sure there's plenty. Anyway, I, on to the next one is Luxury Twist. Let me uh, touch out my cigar here. Too much talking. Not enough smoking. Luxury Twist. Another one gives you high expectations. Really nice smell in the jar. Pre one of the prettiest looking flakes I've ever seen. I, I just want to like it just because it looks so cool. Now I do get a little bit of flavor and the flavor there is super pleasant. I really like that kind of sweet coconutty 
Virginia flavor, but just not enough of it. And worst of all, the bite on it is brutal. I've tried everything. I've tried drying it. I've had some aged. I've tried using filters. It's just not worth the effort. Um, if you like that kind of thing, uh, one tobacco that I found that's similar, although it has a little bit of perique, is um, Cornell and Deal's, um, I have it written down here again, uh, yes, Gillingham Mixture, which is one of those kind of a sweetened Virginias with a little bit of perique, gives it a little bit of a plum, it's not spicy by any means. What? Much better. No bite, great Virginia flavor, and some honey sweetness. All right, so let's go on. Number four, another one of those ones that kind of ruined it for me for Virginia's, and that is McBites or McBaron's Virginia Number One, which was another when I Googled and asked people what a good sweet Virginia was, a lot of people would recommend McBaron's Virginia Number One. Now, smell-wise, look-wise, pretty flake, looks really good uh, and smells smells great, nice nice honey sweet hay right up my alley. I like bright Virginias, but once again scorched my tongue it's hot there's I've, I'm a, I can smoke it a little bit now with, with drying it out and smoking it properly and slow with a filter but it's just not worth the effort when there's so many other tobaccos that are in, in my opinion better for my palate and maybe for yours um, some of the ones I would recommend would be Derringer by Cornell and Deal a great bright Virginia it has a little bit of a honey topping I don't get any any bite out of it it's got the same style of bright um, Virginia, um, uh, even like I think it's McConnell's Flake Virginia. Um, that's another one. Uh, that's maybe it's got a little bit more of a, a lemony flavor to it. Um, yeah. Um, now number five. Uh, this was uh, one I was going to say later, but um, it's in the same vein, and that is um, um, Sutliff's Virginia Flake, um, Bright Virginia Flake. It's another pretty flake, high expectations, smells pretty good. It's got the, the Virginia profile I like. I like bright Virginias, and I like them in flake form, but just no flavor, just as bland as can be. Um, not sure why, but uh, yep, not a fan of that one. Uh, okay, so uh, so a some alternatives if you like just a good flake Virginia, um, although not quite. Um, as bright, um, I, want, I did mention Derringer. Another one would be uh, Cornell and Deal's um, Opening Night. A great Virginia. It does have some brights and it's got some reds. Fantastic. This this kind of switched you know switched me over to enjoying Virginias. I, I realized I can enjoy them. It's not like I thought. I tried, you know, Virginia Number One, and I tried the Sutliff Sweet Virginia, and I tried. Um, some of the you know navy flakes and I wasn't getting anything but as soon as I found you know opening night I realized there are Virginias out there that I can taste it's not just a Virginia thing a couple other ones what do we got here oh here's some ones that uh, probably get some hate on um, GLP's triple play and GLP's jackknife plug two that sounded great on paper I, I like dark fired Kentucky, I like Virginia, I like Perique, should be a great combination. Just didn't do it for me. I'm not, um, I'm not getting a lot of flavor out of them. Uh, I'm getting a little bit of tongue bite, but mostly just, they were just touted as really strong full flavor tobaccos and I just, I just don't get much out of them at all. Um, good alternative to those that I found is um, Watch City Slices 558. That's a great Virginia Perique with just a little bit of dark fired in there to give it that spice. No tongue bite, lots of flavor, great tobacco. Um, also, Director's Cut by HU, to HU, that's another nice little spun tobacco, a little sweeter, um, but it's still got that Virginia Preak, and uh, there might be a little dark fired in there as well. So there you go, some tobaccos that I do not like. So if you agree or disagree, or had similar um, experiences, tell me down in the box. And uh, yeah, so... Uh, there you go. I don't like everything, and uh, so I'll give you a, mostly it's just stuff that I have to flavor chase. I find them frustrating, and if I can find an alternative, then there you go. Uh, there's no. It's not that I hated those tobaccos. I just find there's just no point for me in smoking them, except for maybe once in a while, just to remember what they tasted like or to try them again to see if it, uh, you know I can taste them. But anyway, that is uh, the end of my semi rant, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed it.
and I'll see you guys on my next video. Till then, Aromatics, signing out.